Okay. Welcome to Forces and Laws of Motion. This is simply a uh, very small presentation, uh, with obviously with narration, to look at textbook problems. I believe it's page 128, and it's problem set B. It's the practice set of problems after a sample problem. And so let's take a look. And indeed, yes, page 128 of your textbook. Uh, what will follow will just be worked out solutions. They're static, uh, no interaction really. I'll just present the problem worked out, explain it through quickly, and just so you have uh, some interaction there uh, with the problem itself. Uh, however, of course, the middle bullet point there, I would certainly recommend that you actually try these problems. They may be very simple to you. They may, they may not be so simple to you. But uh, read first, uh, take a look over the practice, or I guess it's called the sample problem. Uh, take a look over that, and then uh, try the uh, practice problems, and then come to this, or come back to this, and check your solutions. Okay, here we go. Number one. Number one was about the dog being pulled, I believe. And so let's see what we have. Oh, and by the way, I am not going to be uh, uh, solving these using the GRASP method, the G-R-A-S-P method, uh, simply because I'm trying to get to the solution uh, relatively quickly without going through all of that format. I highly recommend you follow that format, but uh, I will not for this uh, particular presentation. So here we are. Okay, here's number one. Uh, what I know is that the dog is being pulled, so I'm calling that the applied force. You could call it the force of the pull or the force of the guy on the dog or whatever you would like, girl on the dog. Uh, let's see, uh, and so I just substituted FA, so force applied. And that's 70.0 newtons. The angle of the pull is 30.0 degrees with respect to the horizontal. It's when you're referencing angles, whether you're finding the angle or whether you're given the angle, it's important to know where the angle is being measured from. And often then you want to be able to state that when you solve for an angle or when you're referencing an angle. Where is this angle measured from? That's very important. Uh, because if you measured from the vertical, it would be 60 degrees. And so, you know, it, you know it's, it's representing the same forces in the same direction, but the reference is different, and so that's important. The question here is find X and Y components. Uh, I made a quick sketch here. There's the dog, there's me, and I'm pulling, and hopefully that's roughly a 30-degree angle. We'll pretend it is regardless. Well, from there, I created a force diagram. Uh, here is simply the applied force and roughly 30 degrees. I actually could work this out on graph paper with a protractor and a scaled set of uh, uh, force vectors. Uh, however, I'm going to do this with the math. Then I went ahead with a different color and I sketched in my component vectors. Uh, this guy is pulling up on the dog as well as pulling out on the dog. And so I'm trying to find exactly what that is. Over here, I simply made a list of my variables. That would have been the, the G and the R of GRASP. And this is just, I like these. I, I like to see what's going on and I like to see a force diagram. Now from here, I simply took my Y vector and I slid it uh, parallel to itself and just attached it tail to tip so I could actually get my triangle, if you will. So that's where this diagram comes from. It's simply an orientation there. And here's my 30 degree angle. Okay, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use trig to find my components. If I wanna find the, uh, the pulling out direction, or the pulling out force, I guess, uh, in this particular direction, uh, I'm going to use the cosine of the angle equals uh, that component over the applied force, which is my resultant, which is, of course, your hypotenuse. Rearrange to solve for the actual force that I'm looking for. So it's uh, the applied force multiplied by the cosine of the angle will equal what I'm looking for. Here's the math, comes up to 60.6 .6 newtons. If I want to find uh, the kind of, I would call it a wasted force, maybe, uh, pulling the dog up, uh, which is really not going to move the dog in the forward direction, but that particular part is there, so it's a sine function. And so sine of the angle equals my y component over the applied force. 
rearranged, solved, 35 newtons. So those are the two answers that I was looking for, 60.6 .6 and 35.0 newtons. No direction necessary because they're component forces and they're perpendicular to each other. Okay, next. Problem two. We had a falling apple in a wind. Here we go. Okay, so without a lot of fanfare, I simply just up here, I wrote down what I knew. So this would be the given and the required or requested force of gravity pulling down in the negative direction, force of the wind uh, pushing to the right, and then what is the net force? Drew a quick apple, a little bit of wind, a little bit of motion swishy. Got to have the motion swishy. And then, sadly, I had to draw this apple like seven times before I was happy with it, and it still looked. I don't, it looks like a peach. Anyway, here's my force diagram. To the right, down, force of gravity, everything is labeled. Uh, then I have two possible uh, diagrams out of this by moving uh, my forces parallel to each other. If I take my force of gravity, move it parallel over and connect it tail to tip, I get this diagram. The missing force is the net force, and that would be connecting uh, the uh, tail of the first arrow to the tip of the last arrow. Basically, we're adding vectors here. The angle then would be the angle here that I would be measuring. Everything is still labeled. There is my net force. However, there's a second diagram that I could draw, which is equally as valid, and that's this diagram. What I did in this case is I took my force of wind and I moved that parallel to itself uh, down to uh, connect to gravity and redrew it there. So that's what I did. And so with that here again, I'm going to connect uh, the tail of the first to the tip of the last and that becomes then your resultant, your hypotenuse, the vector we're looking for, that's the net force. Notice in both of these diagrams that this arrow is exactly the same and it is parallel with itself. And that's, there's no surprise there, no matter in what order you add all vectors, if you have 25 vectors, you add them up, you'll end up with the same result in every time, regardless of the order that you actually add your vectors. So it didn't matter which diagram I did, because it was still going to end up with this particular arrow in a particular direction. And this angle and this angle are complementary each other. Complementary to each other, they will actually total to 90. Okay, what's the math? Well, because I happen to know both sides, I can actually use Pythagorean's theorem to actually find the magnitude. So wind squared, gravity squared equals net force squared, square root, 2.48 newtons. If I want to know the angle, so I'm going to come up here, if I want to know this angle or that angle, what you can do is then resort to trig. This is one way of uh, a few. You know, there's a lot of different ways in trig to find because we know a lot about this triangle. About, about all these forces that there's a lot of ways to figure this out. I simply chose the tangent because in the problem I was given the wind and gravity, I don't have to use the net force on this one. So I simply took the tangent of opposite over hypotenuse. This is using the second diagram to get this arrangement. Solving for the angle itself, I have to basically divide tangent to both sides to get it to cancel on the left. And when you do that, it becomes what is, I believe, called inverse tangent and I have, I grew up calling it arc tangent. But either way, it's tangent to the negative one multiplied by the product or the quotient of the wind divided by gravity. And as long as your calculator is in degrees mode, that's important, you'll end up with 25 degrees. Now you can probably go through sine and cosine functions and still find the same value. Uh, so there you go, those are the two answers it was looking for. Next. Uh, number three, the northbound boat in a current, I believe, water current. And this is the last problem. Okay, so what do we have? Well, force of the wind and force of the water. Uh, 452 in a northern direction, kind of maybe pushing the boat in a northern direction. Uh, it is a sailboat. And then you had the current, which is going to keep, kind of push you off course. If you're trying to go due north, this is going to push you off course. Okay, so here's my boat. Believe it or not, I drew this five times, and <laughs> this is the best I could do. And I think it probably looks as much like a rocket ship as anything else. But it's meant to be top-down. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. It's top-down. 
Okay, force of the wind in the northern direction, force of the water pushing it to the left. Resolve this down to a force diagram. From my force diagram, I then take one of these forces and I move it parallel to itself, connecting tail to tip, tail to tip. And that'll give me the ability to draw my resultant, which is your hypotenuse. So it looks like I took the water current and I simply slid it parallel, connecting it, and then here is my result, and that's the net force, and the angle measured from, I guess, north. Um, and in this case, basically, this net force really uh, is going to tell you the, you know, the force at which is moving your boat, but also with the direction. This is the course that you're actually going to be sailing on this, you know. So you might be trying to go north, but the wind and, well, I guess the current is going to push you off on this angle. So what's the math? Well, because I knew a lot about this, I could use Pythagorean's theorem again to actually find the net force. So uh, wind squared, water squared, net squared, square root, 557 newtons. So this net force here, when these are combined, 557 newtons. Basically, these two forces could be replaced with a 557 newton force operating in this direction, and you would get exactly the same effect. And then to find the angle, uh, it was I used the same process. I actually just copied and pasted, um, and I changed my symbology around a little bit. Uh, matter of fact, no, I didn't. I forgot to erase this, so there's no force of gravity here. That would be force of the water. So, um, you know, kudos to me for not, uh, not fixing my diagram. But in any case, I just use tangent function. You can, because you know all about this triangle now, you can use the other functions as well. Either way, it would have been uh, the wind divided by water this time, wind divided by water, uh, inverse tangent of all of this, and it came out to be 35.7 degrees. Now, the angle is important as far as to uh, kind of demark where it is. And in my case, because of the way I drew my diagram, it would be west of north. So west of north, and that's, uh, that's mine. Had you drawn your other diagram where you moved parallel and went this way, measuring from, I guess it would be uh, north of west, and you would get the complementary angle. So 90 minus that, and that would have been your answer. Well, here are your solutions, a little longer than I expected, but I had a good time talking about my bad diagrams and the fact that I forgot to edit. So, uh, of course, always contact me, email, text, uh, call, you know, phone call, and if you have any questions here. So this will lead to, and I've got to digitize problem set B from uh, the textbook, and uh, I'll get that out to you, which is basically just a kind of a, if this is kind of a level one, that'll be a level two. And there is a level three out there. I don't think we'll get to that because there are a lot of other problem sets in chapter four and you know, chapter four, unit four and five. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, contact me if you have any questions.